What if I told you that YouTube could be the absolute secret to blow up your business, get you to sell more than ever before, even if you're just starting from scratch? Now I know it sounds too good to be true, but the reality is this, even if you're brand new, you have to realize that you don't need as many views as you think to start making sales. In today's video, I just wanna show you exactly what the top creators are really focusing on to make as much money as possible from their social media. And for those of you who are new, my name is Ben. I've been on YouTube for the last four years. I've sold over seven figures in terms of courses and mentorships, and now I'm here to help you do exactly the same. So with that being said, let's get straight to it. All right, so if you're gonna take YouTube and social media seriously, the very first thing you need to do is think of your own personal brand. In other words, who are you? Because the reality is this, guys, when you're just starting to speak and putting yourself out there on camera, whether it's on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, or any other platform out there, you have to understand this, is that nobody knows who you are, nobody knows what you're about, who, what you stand for, and most importantly, why on earth should they listen to you? Every single time you make a video, you have to remember that you are brand new and nobody knows about your story whatsoever. So you have to first of all answer the question as to why people should listen to you as opposed to somebody else. So if you are basically a good dog trainer, why should people listen to you? What is your story? Do you have any testimonials? Do you have any credibility? Do you have anything to show to your potential viewers as to what makes you credible for them to actually stop scrolling, stop looking at other YouTube videos potentially and actually listen to what you have to say? So in the very beginning, before you even post your own video, you have to understand this. Who is going to be your exact demographic, what are you going to teach them, why they should listen to you, and ideally if you have any testimonials whatsoever, you really want to show them and show them off as much as possible in order to start building that credibility for your personal brand because that will pay big dividends in the long term. On top of that, you also have to think about what makes you different to everybody else. So say, for example, you're in the fitness niche. Well, there are thousands upon thousands of personal trainers and fitness coaches giving you exactly the same information as everybody else. What is going to help you stand out? Are you in incredible shape? Do you have a lot of testimonials? Do you have a lot of experience in a potential field? Why exactly should people listen to you? Maybe it's a case of you niching down in a certain segment of a market as opposed to going broad like everybody else. So for example, maybe you're very passionate about teaching um, fitness to females or potentially to brides or potentially people who are diabetic and you are much more into a niche feel as opposed to going broad, but you always have to think about what am I really passionate about and what could I potentially see myself doing over a hundred videos each and every single year. When I started with my own personal brand, I knew that I could help people with their own Amazon FBA store. So I basically did non-stop Amazon FBA related videos in terms of how to start your business, how to start doing product research, how to negotiate with suppliers and so on. You have to sit down and come up with a plan exactly what you're going to be talking about for years to come. All right, so once you have figured out on who you are and essentially what you stand for in your own personal brand, the next thing you need to go is actually figure out what social media platforms, I'm just gonna zoom in on this, what social media platforms should you be focusing on? My personal favorite has always been YouTube long form because if you are an educator, in other words, if you are sharing your knowledge to the world, you are much more likely to develop a deep connection with your audience on YouTube long form as opposed to TikTok, Instagram, YouTube Shorts, Twitter, or any of the other platforms out there. People actually want to be educated more so on YouTube long form than as opposed to on TikTok when they're scrolling right before they go to sleep. So you have to think about that. Number two is you also have to think about who is your target audience. So for example, if you're like one of my clients who is actually teaching children how to improve on their GCSE grades, then maybe TikTok will be your number one platform and not necessarily YouTube long form because more of that younger generation is on TikTok and Snapchat. Whereas if you're, for example, teaching people how to train dogs or potentially into fitness or something like that, then maybe Instagram and YouTube long form. What I want you guys to focus on is to make sure not to cover all of them in one time at once, okay? The only way to get good at social media is actually by focusing on one platform first, really learning it from start to finish, and then potentially looking to expand later down the line. Now, 
if you do have quite a bit of money behind you, then you can potentially employ somebody to, for example, let's say you do a YouTube long form video, you get somebody like an editor or a clipper or whatever they're called to actually cut them up and then upload them on your behalf on the likes of YouTube Shorts, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, and so on. Okay, so then you actually like trying to speak to a multiple of audiences on different platforms. But if you're just starting out and if you're in the very, very beginning, do your research, figure out exactly where your target demographic is and go all in on that one platform. You can always expand later. What else is really important when it comes to social media is to make sure to never sell in public. Now, yes, you may have a coaching offer. Yes, you may have a course. Yes, you may want to do some sort of group coaching. But at the very beginning on social media, you really do not want to come across as that person that continuously sells to their audience. People, believe it or not, do not want to be sold to. They want to receive a value from you. And ideally, that value should come off for free. Now, you may think, yes, I'm going to give away too much and therefore nobody is going to speak to me. But that is not the truth. People will come to you and I'll get to that later in this video. In the very beginning, you want to come across as somebody that is knowledgeable, somebody that is credible. You want to build as much goodwill as possible. And the only way to do that is to give as much information as possible to your audience. Kind of exactly what I'm doing here right now. My own personal brand is this. I have built up my own seven-figure Amazon FBA business. I have built up my course and mentorship businesses seven figures as well. And I now want to help other creators such as yourself do exactly the same thing. I am not holding anything back whatsoever. I'm going to provide as much value as possible to my target demographic. And I want you guys to think about doing exactly the same thing. If you are gatekeeping your best information and if you are trying to say, hey, I'm only going to give this out to my paid clients, then that is really going to hold you back because you're not going to come across as knowledgeable and you're not going to come across as credible and you're not going to help out and really build that deep connection with people that will help you make those sales later down the line. And also when you're just starting out on social media, let's say for example, you've chosen YouTube long form to go for, which is like I said, my favorite platform to start off with because it is the hardest but it's the one that's going to give you the best return on investment. You really have to start posting. Remember, you're not going to be perfect. You're going to be far from perfect, but it won't, by posting, you'll actually figure out what works and what doesn't. And by looking at those statistics, those analytics, you can then start thinking about what should I double down to? What are people really responding to? Like for example, right now, I have made videos around how to scale up your digital products. I have made videos about how to build out your, your email list. And I've also made up videos about how going viral may actually be damaging for your business. And guess what? People have responded the best in terms of how to scale up their personal brand and how to actually scale up their business. So therefore, I'm going to double down on that and make more videos on that front and maybe fall off back onto how to go viral about YouTube views and all that sort of stuff. Because clearly, according to the statistics, my audience is not interested in that subject as much as some of the others that I talk about. What's most important here is to realize that you have to start making videos that your audience wants to see and not the videos that you want to make because sometimes those two things are not the same. You may be very inspired to do various videos about various different subjects, but if your audience is not interested in that, and if your audience doesn't respond to that, you are completely wasting your time. And if you want to make as much money as possible from social media, that is not the right way to go about it. And also before I move into the next part of this funnel, you also have to remember this, is that social media is all about partnerships. It's all about networking. So if you're, for example, a dog trainer or a PT or anything like that, is there anybody in your category, in your niche that you could potentially collaborate with, do a few videos on? This is why you see these top creators always collaborating with one another because that's how they exchange audiences. That's how we discover new people. So for example, Mr. Beast continues to bring out new influences into his videos because those videos bring out more and more audience from those influences. Those influences bring an audience of their own into Mr. Beast's channel, which is why they continue to do these challenges. There is no reason why you can't do exactly the same thing. So allow people from other audiences 
come into yours. So for example, you do a collaboration with somebody, but also then you jump onto their channel as well. If there was one hack to build up your audience as quickly as humanly possible, it's actually by collaborating with other influencers and doing as many videos together as possible on each other's channels. Okay, so now that we have developed your personal brand and we have started posting on the social media where your target demographic is at, the next thing we need to look at is actually nurturing your audience. In other words, this is basically where people go from just being aware about you and who you are to actually seeing you as a credible source of information, somebody that they trust, somebody that they respect, and somebody that knows that you are very knowledgeable in that field. This is exactly what happened with me with my Amazon FBA videos. In the very beginning, I just focused on giving people as much value as possible in terms of YouTube long form videos. Those videos were in so much detail that some of them went over an hour and people found them really valuable. And yes, some of them did go for my mentorships and some of them did go for my courses and some of them did not, but they still found them valuable. But YouTube long form is just one way of nurturing your audience. You can also go through email lists as well, which actually right now thinking is probably the biggest mistake I've ever made is by not creating an email list and getting people emailed each and every single day with various tips. So for example, when your social media starts to pop off and really go viral, you really want to push all of those people into a potential email list where you then have their details. So if something were to happen to your YouTube account or TikTok account or Instagram account, whatever, you still have a means of speaking to your audience through email. Believe it or not, but do this. Do your own research. Go into ChatGPT and put in what is the highest form of conversion when it comes to social media marketing. And what it will say is actually email lists, number one, YouTube long form, number two, and then everything else, number three and four and five. Some people think that email lists are now old fashioned. It's not 2010 anymore. But I'm here to tell you guys that emails will never go out of fashion. It is something that is taken super seriously and something that is you as a content creator also should be taken super seriously because the more emails you have, the more money you'll make. It's as simple as that, okay? Besides YouTube long form, besides email lists, we can also run webinars and podcasts as well. I had a lot of success with webinars because it was the only time that my audience was able to watch me live. Because what I used to do is I used to run free live webinars each and every single month where I used to teach people and answer their questions around Amazon FBA. And what they really appreciated was the fact that they got to see me live and ask questions, interrogate me, get their answers there and then so they knew that I was knowledgeable and I wasn't just speaking off a script. That is a great way not to just help your audience nurture them even further, but also show off your knowledge that you're not just reading off a script and you really know what you're talking about. Webinars, guys, is a super powerful way to get people who are just aware of you to becoming your real biggest fans for years to come. But apart from that, you can also go on to podcasts and start building out your own podcast, which I'm not most experienced in, and of course, free communities as well. The problem with free communities, though, is that you'll get a lot of people, but you'll also get a lot of time wasters who just want to get as much free information as possible. So with communities, you've got to be really careful and really think twice whether or not you want to go free community, where you'll get loads of people asking you loads of questions, or do you want to go down the paid community route, which will be a lot smaller, but maintaining that interaction level is going to be much more difficult because there is going to be a lot less people in there. In my personal opinion, when you're just getting started, just focus on building out your email list and doing as much YouTube long form videos as possible. If there is the best ROI when it comes to social media, it will be coming from those two places. Everything else can come later. All right, so now that we figured out what your personal brand is, your social media and which platforms you should be tackling first, and remember, don't tackle all of them at once. You have nurturing your audience in terms of YouTube long form, in terms of email lists, and potentially some of the other platforms to nurture your audience and really build that connection long term. This is when you go into sell. Now, I can't stress this enough. You cannot just go with this 
and straight settling straight away because people don't know who you are. They haven't built up that connection with you and you only sell where you have given an enormous amount of value first. How do you sell to your audience? Well, to begin with, you create your own landing page, okay? After your audience has watched a number of your videos and read a number of your emails, at the very end of the email, you can always say, hey, if you want to work with me on a one-to-one -one basis, if you want to learn more about such and such subjects, I do have more information available for you in a form of a course or a group coaching or whatever and put that at the end of the email. For example, you can also schedule calls from your email list as well. You can basically say, hey, for those of you who are interested to take this seriously, let's say for example, if you really want to train your dog to be the most obedient dog can have, then you can just jump on somebody in my team and actually qualify and see if we can potentially help you with your um, training or potentially if you are a fitness coach, maybe we can help you out, get you more clients and so on. And we can just basically start to sell them on the calls and the DMs. But what's important here, guys, and I can't stress this enough, and I see this mistake happening so many times, is that people jump into selling straight away. This takes quite a few months to build in the very beginning. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to get a whole bunch of views, which is what exactly what I said in the very beginning of the video. But what it does mean is you have to build enough credibility, enough goodwill, enough reputation to show that you know exactly what you're talking about and then you build that value and then you say, hey, I actually have a lot more to help you out with. Would you like to work together? It shouldn't even feel like a sell by that point. What's important to understand, guys, is you cannot sell quickly and you can't sell straight away. Too many people just jump straight into selling once people have recognized them and followed them on Instagram or TikTok or something like that. You have to build up that reputation first. You have to show that you know exactly what you're talking about, that you care about your followers and you're really genuinely there to help them. If you've done this the correct way, when it comes down to actually selling your own products and services, it shouldn't even feel like selling. People should come to you and say, hey, can I ask you this question? Can I work with you on a one-to-one -one basis? Do you have anything that can potentially help me out with my problems? Okay, and the way to do that is through various landing pages, through calls, through Instagram DMs, through your own website. If you're, for example, selling your own product, you can do it on Amazon or from a free or paid community. So something it will look like is you have your own brand, they find you on social media, you nurture them through a whole bunch of value going forward, through long form YouTube, through email list webinars, and then you sell them on one of these platforms, okay? And then at the very end, what most people completely forget is the fact that the best way to sell, the most, basically the one that is going to convert the highest is by actually getting referrals. So if you've got any results, if you've got any testimonials whatsoever, you want to make sure to get those testimonials either in the written form or video testimonials. I'm actually gonna zoom in on this so you can actually see it clearly. But you want to get as much physical proof as possible. And the best one is actually video testimonials because those ones are hardest to fake, which is why with each and every single client that I work with now, I want to make sure to get a video testimonial from them because then it helps my credibility, it helps my reputation. And on top of that, you always have to think about, can I get them to refer me other people for business? So. I, for example, have a referral scheme. So if somebody brings in me more clients, they will get a commission on each and every single sale, which means that if I get a client and I win, then my referee, my the person that is doing giving the referral will also win as well. You can also do product reviews. You can also do influencer shout outs. So for example, if you have a large network, you can also say to your influencers, say, hey, why don't you do a story about my services and anybody that comes through and buys, you can get a percentage and that percentage can be anything from 10% all the way up to 50%. And think about it, from your referrals perspective, all they're doing is connecting the customer to yourself and getting a nice chunk of change on the back end. So something that can be really, really helpful and it's something that's really useful at the very beginning when you don't have that much customers, you don't have that many testimonials, but if somebody is referring your services, then that means you clearly know what you're talking about. You're clearly, you're good at what you do essentially because the best way to sell is when somebody else is selling your services for you. 
That is by far the most effective way. And that is how I made a majority of my sales last year is by actually getting referrals. If somebody has done well in their Amazon FBA store, they will just refer me business. They will refer me other people who want to start up their own Amazon FBA stores as well. And that's how I was able to charge for my mentorships and give out my, you know, my my people who, who referred me that business. So everybody was winning, to be honest. In a nutshell, it is really, really not complicated, guys. Once all of this is set up, if you know exactly what you're good at, you know exactly what you're talking about, you know exactly what you stand for, you build up a lot of goodwill through social media and nurturing your customers, and then sell them very softly. If you've done this right, like I said, it will never, ever, ever feel like a sell. These people, most of the time, will come to you. Believe it or not, right now, if you look at the likes of Alex Hormozzi, do you see him hard selling? No, he tries to provide as much value as possible through social media and nurturing their audience. So when that audience actually gets results from the advice that Alex has given, they come to him and they beg to work with him. And that is the exact position that I want you to be in in a couple of years' time. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.